There's a new technology coming out that has me very, very excited. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Okay, so today I want to talk about something that could make CPUs a lot faster, and I definitely feel like CPUs over the last couple of generations have needed a pretty substantial change when it comes to how they access memory, as it does appear, especially when you look at things like Zen 5, that they are severely memory bandwidth starved, or at least that's my best guess as to why we're not seeing very substantial gains when it comes to CPU generations anymore. Well, all that could be changing because a new memory technology is about to hit the market and it's actually looking a lot more impressive than I was expecting. This new technology is CAM2 or compression attached memory modules. Now, this is a very, very impressive memory technology because it takes everything that you've loved about your RAM and makes it just way, way better. It can go way faster, potentially I've heard have way lower latencies and the overall stability should be much, much better. Now, I don't know about you you guys but for me ddr5 has been an absolute nightmare to deal with especially if you're trying to overclock it it seems like the actual stability of the memory is really on the edge i feel like the dim standard itself is really starting to show its age as we approach faster and faster memory speeds to the point where I feel like depending on the board that you have beyond DDR5 6400 is really quite a crapshoot. You might think something's stable and then months down the line, you start blue screening because as it turns out, well, the signal integrity just wasn't good enough. And this is causing an issue when it comes to CPUs. Again, not really getting a whole lot faster because the memory bandwidth isn't really improving. We're not getting lower latencies. We're kind of stuck with this really questionably stable DDR5 that I just can't stand anymore. Cam 2 should be fixing that with its much better stability, speeds, and timings. This is really, really good, but to illustrate just how big of an improvement Cam 2 could have, let's go ahead and take a look at this chart that I've thrown together to illustrate the type of improvements you could see out of this new memory because yes, it's huge. Now first take a look at the 7950X. This CPU, you can typically get 6,000 megatrans for memory to run in a 64 gigabyte capacity, but the problem with AMD's architecture right now because of the infinity fabric limitations is that the most you're gonna get out of, I believe the read bandwidth is 64 gigabytes per second, which honestly is not good at all by today's standard. And this has not changed whatsoever with Zen 5. And yes, the 9950X3D could go a long way in fixing this, as sure, the actual bandwidth to the memory will be the same, but with an enormous amount of cache on the CPU, well, you won't have to be going out to your memory as often, so especially for gaming, this is gonna make the 9950X3D and the 9800X3D actually, I think, a pretty substantial improvement over the regular Zen 5 chips. Maybe we could see 10, 15, 20, maybe even 25% more performance out of these CPUs. Probably not that much, but you get the idea. It should fully unlock these chips. However, there's still gonna be scenarios where when you need to access that DRAM, that 64 gigabytes per second is gonna be really, really slow and lead to some somewhat poor performance, especially for bandwidth heavy tasks. Now, with that being the case, Intel has been ahead for some time. They've been able to comfortably do around 6,800 mega transfers, although even that can be hit or miss depending on the motherboard at 64 gigabytes, giving you around 109 gigabytes per second and also typically lower latencies to the memory as well. And this actually comes to around a 70% improvement when it comes to the actual memory performance. But this is where CAM2 comes into play because it's gonna change the game completely. CAM2 can actually, according to early information, and I have been in talks with some motherboard makers as well who are planning on putting some of these out. I can't confirm anything, but I believe there will be some available around the launch of Intel's next generation CPUs. Well, yeah, the early numbers are looking like at a bare minimum, we could be looking at 8,000 mega transfers being very, very easily achievable, but it sounds like they're gonna be shooting for potentially some 128 gigabyte sticks running at 8,533 mega transfers, which does give you 137 gigabytes per second of total bandwidth 
or over double the memory performance of what Zen 5 can actually supply you and also around 26% higher bandwidth than what even a really good DDR5 kit could get you on something like a 14900K. But it doesn't stop there because apparently they're also planning on making 192 gigabyte modules running up to 9600 mega transfers, which would give you 154 gigabytes per second or almost two and a half times the memory performance of a Zen 5 CPU or around 41% higher bandwidth than what you would get on a good DDR5 kit on a 14900K. Now, let me tell you guys, whether it's 26% or 41% higher bandwidth, either way, that's an enormous increase in memory bandwidth. And you can bet that a lot of tasks are gonna significantly benefit from a massive improvement in that memory bandwidth, as this is just a way better memory standard as the traces going to this new DRAM are shorter and not spread out as much, leading to far, far better signal integrity and more stable, faster, lower latency RAM. With that being the case, we can actually expect that if you take a look at the early leaks and rumors around the Intel Core Ultra 285K, how would this affect it? Well, we're talking about a CPU that allegedly is gonna have an IPC increase of around 14%. With that being the case, you would expect that a 26 to 41% bandwidth increase or somewhere thereabouts would at the very least allow you to fully realize that IPC. However, you could see even more than that if this does scale well with that memory bandwidth. Now, we don't know if that's gonna be the case. You know, Are you gonna get a CPU that's 40% faster because it has 40% memory bandwidth? Probably not, but who knows, it could be a decent improvement. We also do have to keep in mind that these new CPUs for gaming, I do believe are gonna be very, very powerful as they are gonna be not only disabling hyperthreading, but not including it at all, which actually can speed up the CPU and save space. In fact, even if you just disable hyperthreading in games, I've seen anywhere from zero to 30% improvements in performance. And I do believe overall being on the safe side that I would expect around a 10% improvement to gaming performance just by not including hyperthreading. So if you multiply that against the 14% IPC increase, well, it's very likely that we could see an Arrow Lake CPU coming in with 25% higher gaming performance and actually achieving that because of this new CAM2 memory, allowing it to feed the cores really, really well and give you that really great 1% low performance as well. And with that being the case, well, where would this stack up against AMD? I mean, is AMD really in big trouble? And I think the answer is yes, because if this happens, and do keep in mind, I mean, we're just doing math based on the information that we have now, it could fall short, but if this does happen, well, Intel is technically, at least according to a hardware unboxed video, around 10% faster when it comes to the average frame rate over Zen 5 already when you compare the 14900K to something like the 9700X. But if you multiply that by 25%, we're talking about a CPU which could be in excess of 30% faster than Zen 5. Again, it could fall short, but if that turns out to be true, that's gonna be a really, really good CPU, especially if you've seen how much better these E-Cores are supposedly gonna be, as well as the leaked performance around these CPUs already, which are probably not using CAM2 yet. And do keep in mind that these new Arrow Lake CPUs are supposed to have far lower power draw as well, getting them a little bit closer to AMD, although I do expect AMD still will have an advantage in the power draw by some margin. I'm just not entirely sure what that margin will be at this point in time. Now, yes, Zen 5 X3D could potentially match or beat this CPU if it's really, really good, if it scales absolutely incredibly, but that's something we just don't know at this point in time because we don't know how memory bandwidth starved Zen 5 is and how much the X3D cache is going to alleviate. But either way you slice it, I do think that AMD should be a little bit worried about CAM2 in general because especially as we start to head into DDR6 where memory speeds could double or triple again, well, this is gonna start to become a huge problem for AMD if they don't solve the Infinity Fabric problem. It's not too much of a problem yet. Clearly, it's starting to become one with Zen 5, at least in my opinion, as I believe that's a big reason as to why we're not seeing gaming uplifts over Zen 4. The memory band's the same, so yeah, it's probably not gonna scale as well. But again, Zen 6, if that has the same problem and Intel continues to scale further and further with higher and higher speed memory, AMD is gonna be 
in big trouble. But that's just what I think. Do you think that AMD is gonna be in big trouble or do you think that they're gonna completely redesign their core and also have a massive improvement with Zen 6? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.